Welcome to Stop My Crisis. I'm your host, Vivian Gaspar, and here with us today, we have Sergeant Fred Williams. He started his lifelong dedication of service as a Marine veteran. He has been a law enforcement officer for 23 years. Thank you so much for coming here today and sharing with us your knowledge and your expertise and taking time out of your really busy schedule helping everyone else. It's my pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you. And we'd like to cover some topics today that are very important to everyone who's a parent. Okay. Unfortunately, it's been on the news too much and it's unfortunately ended very tragically too many times. Can you talk to us a little bit about cyberbullying? Because now we talk about a lot of bullying in schools. Absolutely. But everybody thinks you know about cyberbullying, but I would really like to go over it one more time and clarify it. So please, let's start off by just clarifying what's the difference in regular, traditional bullying in schools and cyberbullying? Well, the traditional bullying, uh, you think of the bully who comes onto the playground, shakes you down for your lunch money, or you know, threatens you, tells you you're wearing an ugly shirt and makes everybody else laugh at you and you feel bad. Um, it's in person, it's right there. It happens and then it's over. Cyberbullying is the same uh, outcome. You still feel belittled, you feel out of control, you feel bad, okay? But cyberbullying occurs from the computer or from the phone, a text, uh, an email, a Facebook post, or any social media post. And sometimes these posts come from people you don't know, which makes them even more depressing in a lot of cases for the victim. So are these children just feeling like they have self-esteem issues, that they actually pay attention to what's being sent to them? Because they're just words on a screen, regardless of if it's their laptop, or usually mm -hmm. it's people's phones nowadays. I mean, right. uh, unfortunately, almost every kid has a phone. Right. But what is making our children so susceptible to letting it impact them so much? I mean, have you seen uh, cases of suicide because of cyberbullying yourself? Well, there, there are several cases, high profile cases that have been in the news recently, um, a few here in New Jersey, unfortunately, where cyberbullying uh, was a key part of what went into the depression of this poor individual to make them commit suicide. Um, it's one of the types of things that builds up over a period of time. It's not something like somebody calls you a bad name one time and you feel so bad you, that you're going to be depressed. Cyberbullying, like any other type of consistent harassment, it gets bigger and bigger exponentially as it moves on. And for a child or a preteen, where some of these moments are all that is really on their mind, and if they have a sort of depression anyway, that's gonna be very much magnified in their mind. And what do you think makes someone the, well, the anonymous usually, uh, you know, the perpetrator of the cyberbullying, mm -hmm. why are they doing this? Have you ever talked to the kids who are doing it? Do you have the opportunity to do that? Sure, so, uh, some, some kids, uh, don't get me wrong, a lot of the kids do know who this person is. Uh, in the cases of uh, people they don't know, they may have three friends who say something to them uh, that is is belittling to them and the next thing you know friends of friends may see that in certain social media feeds and may say something and the victim may not know those per those persons that are now involved in it um, in either case the outcome that happens is this person really doesn't know where to turn for for the moment they're experiencing this and it's not like they can turn to a friend at school and say you know did you see what he did or they can talk about it Sometimes they don't want to tell their parents because it's like, well, my mom might say I, I have to get off Facebook if I, if I tell her that this is happening to me. First thing she's going to tell me is, well, you can't have Facebook anymore, okay? Um, they don't think things through. You know, they're being victimized. They are, could be suffering from a depression, a depressive state. Um, they could already be feeling like nobody's going to listen to them. So that makes it all that much more difficult to cope with what's happening. Have the police at all gotten involved? Because, I mean, is this considered a crime? If someone's it's, doing something to taunt or bully just despite the fact that it's not even in person any longer, it, is this a crime? It is considered uh, harassment, okay, which is not a very serious crime, mind you. But if there are threats made, you know, if there's a, a threat that says, hey, you know, I've I'm gonna, if I see you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you up so bad, or if you wear that shirt again, or if you talk to that, you talk to my girlfriend again, I'm gonna do this, or, you know, if there's a threat, 
a viable threat to hurt this person, whether it's with a weapon or with fists or anything else like that, um, that is a more serious form of harassment. And if it can be proven that this person has the means to carry that threat out, then it can be considered a terroristic threat. What about if someone who's doing, you know, perpetrator is doing this to, you know, the cyberbullying, the bully themselves, mm -hmm. if they're not saying, I'll hurt you, but if they're intimidated by saying, why don't you hurt yourself? Is that mm -hmm. the same thing? It's very much the same thing because now you're attacking a, a victim who could have um, be suffering from some sort of uh, depression or other mental health aspect that is going to make them take that to heart. Okay, it's going to add to their angst. Okay, so if you're trying to get them to form an opinion that they need to hurt themselves, that is certainly something that would be considered by any prosecutor as to the prosecutability of that crime, as to whether they can get a conviction for that. So that's, is that fall under harassment, intimidation? Because if they're not saying, I'm not sure what kind of crime that is, because if you're not saying that I'm gonna hurt you, mm -hmm. uh, because of course, the, unfortunately, the few cases of suicide we've heard recently, uh, at least that, that hit the news that mm -hmm. I've heard about, uh, they're saying, why don't you kill yourself? You're worth nothing, and then they do. That, that can still, that can still, like I said, that's going to be up to the prosecutor and the police. The police are going to have to obtain the evidence that can support the heavier charge. Okay, If there is evidence to say that this person's actions of hurting themselves is a direct result of what this bully or cyber bully did, they can be held culpable. If that's something that a prosecutor can prove in court and that the police have collected that evidence that can support that, they can be charged with it and hopefully convicted, okay? Well, what if you find out for whatever, through whatever means that your child is the bully? Mm -hmm. What do they do to the person who is the bully in that case? Well, in a lot of cases, um, <laughs> I've seen parents who don't want to accept the fact that their child is being the bully. Um, and I've also seen parents who have said, uh, who have been so shocked and surprised that they made it their business to make sure that their child got the appropriate help to deal with the feelings of uh, wanting to control somebody or find out what it is that is making them bully this person. So I, I've seen both. And the thing you have to remember is the bully is just as much a victim as the victim is sometimes. Sometimes the bully comes from a household where that behavior may be something that they see all the time in their own parents or in their own um, siblings. Um, so they could be acting out in a way that they're just kind of carrying forward what they've already seen most of their lives at home. And to them, they may not even recognize the fact that uh, what I'm doing could be hurtful to someone. I'm just doing what, you know, happens to me all the time. So, so you think that when they're doing these bullying actions, they don't realize that they're doing something that could be a bullying action? Sending I, these text messages, they're... I mean, they may be thinking that it makes them feel good for a moment, but that, hey, I have power over someone else, but do they realize it's a crime? I mean, sometimes people could just be thinking, you know, I'm gonna say this, and they know it's hurtful, but to them, it's like, uh, it's a joke. They should have been able to take it. And But everybody, you can't count on the fact that everybody is gonna either see the humor in your sarcasm or shake off what you're telling them as, as nothing because, uh, because it doesn't mean that much to you. Okay, and then sometimes there are, are the actual people who want to hurt somebody with the words they say. So, I mean, that's something you have to look, you have to look at the totality of circumstances, the big picture of what's going on, and figure out how it applies to this victim. How young is it going? Does it go past teenagers? Then they uh, do this? It's cyberbullying, I, I mean, you can see there are cases of cyberbullying um, that turned out to affect uh, young adults in college. Okay, um, any, any type of a school age, uh, young adult, I would say college age or below. Peer pressure is very important. How you fit in in your, your social group is very important. Particularly if you're a graduating high school senior and now you're going to a new college, uh, you go off to college or university, you don't know anybody, okay? Maybe one or two people if you're lucky, and now you have to get into this whole new social dynamic to you know, understand and, and get into the things that are going on around you and, and be successful at it. So during those periods of trying to, get, uh, trying to adapt to that, 
people are very susceptible to things like that. A clique can form. You may want to be in that clique. All of a sudden, uh, some people in that clique find things about you they don't like, and now they're harping on that, and that's hurtful to a person. What's the youngest age range that you've seen Bullying, or that you've heard of? The youngest, uh, we, we see kids in elementary school. Um, a lot of times kids who are just getting into social media for the first time may say things, do things that they really don't understand themselves, how they could be hurtful, or there's misinterpreta misinterpretation, okay? Somebody could say something and if you and I are talking face to face, you see my face, you see my gestures, you see exactly what I mean as I'm saying the words that I'm speaking. But in a text message or on a post, um, if a person's not using emojis or something else to, to do that, to take the place of that, you can very easily misconstrue what you're reading, okay? You can very easily think that now um, what's happening to me is, is oh, this, this is awful, why would they say that? And it could be as bad as what the bully wanted or it couldn't be as bad, but you don't know. Vast majority of these cases are not ending up tragically because there's so right. many more. What makes the news is what's tragic, right, exactly. which should never have even happened, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, so but it could still affect, and not most likely it does affect the victim's mentality, how they feel about themselves, how they perform in school. There's so yeah. many different aspects and how it affects oh, them. Sure. You know, maybe they become introverted. What have you seen have been the effects of being cyberbullied? Some of the effects, uh, you know, introverted. In in being it, becoming introverted, uh, the kid may already be an introvert, and that just makes them withdraw even more. You may have a child who's um, trying to break out. Maybe they just moved in the neighborhood. Maybe they're just trying to make new friends, okay? May and all of a sudden now, something could happen where someone may speak some words to them or say something to them, or, you know, like I said earlier, a click of form, and now this kid is feeling like, well, why'd I even bother? You know, why, why'd I bother to do that? You know, the, they don't care. Um, and then other, other kids are very resilient. It's like, oh, these guys over here don't like me? All right, I don't need them. So I'm gonna go over here. To, I wish we knew how we could teach a kid to be resilient because that's obviously the better way to go. If you don't like what someone's saying or doing, find someone else who's gonna be kinder or more willing to become friendly and get along. Well, I agree, but not all, not all kids have the ability to do that. And I mean, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I don't know why it might come more naturally to some kids as opposed to others, but that's just the way we all are. We're all wired differently and we all learn differently. So as children, I mean, if you see your child or if a teacher sees a child in class who is normally open, gregarious, and you know, participating in class, and then all of a sudden they're not, a teacher knows that there's something wrong. Okay, a parent knows that there's something wrong. Um, if a, a kid, on the other hand, um, is introverted and, and just really not participating in anything and all of a sudden they are, that's gonna be a welcome change. You know, people are gonna say, hey, that's great. But the other way around is the one where we really need to be concerned, you know, at least find out what's going on. It could be something small. It could be something that has been happening for a long period of time. Can you give us just a couple of tips on what a parent should be aware of if there's a potential for cyberbullying. And it, let's say they find out there is. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's mm -hmm. start there. If they find out there has been cyberbullying for any reason, they just come across it, are there software that uh, can you could attach to your child's phone that you're aware Absolutely. of that you recommend? There are, well, I, I can't recommend like any well, I mean, particular product. Well, I mean, that you say that you know has but, worked, Yeah, but there, there, are, there are apps out there that parents can install on their phones that can um, allow them to uh, read text messages um, and mirror the phone's operation, their child's phone operation. Um, and also it, it has a GPS mm -hmm. locating on it. So, you know, your child says, oh, I'm going to uh, go into Susan's house after school. Then, and you know Susan lives at 123 Anywhere Street. <laughs> you can check that and, oh, okay, she's at 123 Anywhere Street. And so you can verify. Uh, the other thing is, is if you, if you have a child that's just getting into the social media aspect of things, um, like Facebook is a good example, you can, you can friend them, you can be their friend and be able to see the posts that they're interacting with people, um, and you can also set the privacy settings so that the kid is only interacting with friends, okay? Um, not the entire Facebook community. Oh, you mean a okay? few billion people? A few billion people out there, you know, so. <laughs> that could like, be a problem. Yeah, you know. Then you have I, safety issues. Exactly, you may not want your 12-year-old dealing with, you know, 
the billions of people out there who <laughs> have different political opinions than they do. <laughs> so it, it's, it's one of those things where you can do that. Uh, as kids get older, um, I would suggest that parents kind of still be friends with them and but back away, you know, if you see some kind of comment, don't just try and join in on the thread to be joining in on it because now you might embarrass <laughs> your, your, your child. Yeah, you know, like a so, helicopter parent. <laughs> exactly, you know, a helicopter parent on Facebook. So that's they, even they, scary. That you think it's you, the stalker. Yeah, exactly. So, but but it happens, you know. And uh, I mean, kids go through that period where they go from being, you know, oh my gosh, I need my parents, I love my parents, to oh, why are they in my life? And then they become young adults, and it's like, wow, I really so glad you guys are here <laughs> so they they run through that whole cycle and when you run through that cycle on social media with them um, there are going to be times where they're okay with you <laughs> being with them on social media and there are going to be times when they're kind of embarrassed or think that you know why don't you back off a little bit they will just come out and and tell them uh, tell their kids I'm gonna I'm gonna shut you down if this and that happens and then the kid may look at the parents say well I saw you say these kinds of things <laughs> to your friends on Facebook uh, or on Instagram. And so now you have a situation where you weren't doing what you wanted them to do. And yeah, some, you should model the yeah, behavior. some children will look back at that and say, oh, well, isn't that kind of deceitful? Why are you doing that? So but you're going to tell me I can't do it. So, I mean, you have to know your child. Your child has to accept your rules. OK. And you guys got to work that out. You know, there's a lot of things that just don't get worked out sometimes. And that's when you get that's when you get problems. Well, I think this is information every parent really needs to know. And you're saying it starts in the tween years, maybe as soon as maybe even younger. They if, have if, if you let how old does a kid have a there? phone? Maybe a nine, ten nowadays, eleven. Yeah. So yeah. as soon as they have a phone, it's I think this is more prevalent. That's where it starts. So it starts at maybe ten years old, for mm -hmm. example, depends on, and goes into the young twenties. Mm -hmm. oh, and I, I mean, there are all kinds of things that can happen once that child gets a phone. Once you introduce that, you've got to come up with the rules. You got to teach them how to be safe. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very true. I understand about the seriousness of cyberbullying, but we started to now go into how, unfortunately, the internet is now being used as a whole new hunting ground for predators. Oh yeah. Uh, to gain access to, unfortunately, you know, to help their pedophilia to teenagers. Um, I'm sure usually it's girls, but it could be boys. Mm -hmm. What do you, what can you tell us about this? How do we keep our teens safe in this situation? You you stay involved with them. You know, you you talk to them. My my daughters know that you know there's nothing that they could experience out there in the world that as long as I'm alive and if I have uh, if they need to reach out to me, um, I, I said I don't care what kind of light you're in. If you did something and you're embarrassed about it or you think that wow I really screwed this up, you know I said I'm the guy that you can always call. Okay, I'm not going to pass judgment on you. I'm going to help you. And if there's something that you need to get out of that and there's a punishment that needs to happen because of that, we'll deal with that later. But we're going to deal with you first. And that's always so first and foremost. The most important thing is making sure your kids know that they could trust you. Right. That it's better mm -hmm. to trust than fear. Right. Okay. I, I, that's, that's how I feel as a father. Um, that's what has worked for me as a police officer. Okay. Um, when I had to deal with informants, they expected a certain level of trust. I expected it. Um, you knew at some point that was going to deteriorate because well, you did undercover work, yeah, right? because you're yeah, because you when you you're on divergent paths <laughs> with another person, you may have a common ground right here, but over here, not so much. Okay, <laughs> so it, it's you you have to realize where these parameters are. Okay, um, you know your kids, or a parent knows their kids, um, hopefully better than anybody, and that's how you build on those relationships. If you suspect that something's going on, um, then you know there are other things you, you can look at the you can look at the kids that your your child is is hanging out with. Um, you can, or if you don't know the kids that your your child is hanging out with, get to know them. You know, yeah, we we've, we've dealt with parents. You know, they call up, they say, hey, you know. My, my son, my daughter, they're, they're not where they're supposed to be, and I'm concerned. You say, okay, we're going to help you. Uh, do you have a, a recent picture? Oh, no, not really. Uh, you don't have okay, a recent well, picture of well, your own child? Well, whose friend, whose friend's house do you think they might be at? Oh, it's, it's this guy, Bobby. He's a real good guy. Okay, well, where, where's Bobby live? Uh, I'm not too sure. Okay, uh, do you know Bobby's last name? Oh, uh, well, he only met him a little while ago, so I don't know. So it's like parents are busy. OK, right. parents work. OK, um, even if you're a stay at home parent, you are busy. So it's difficult sometimes to stay abreast of all of these things 
and they don't come into play until you have to pick up the phone and call the police or, you know, you have a, a problem that you need to work out now. So, you know, stay involved in your kids' lives. Keep them in activities that they're getting something out of. Keep them involved in, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, educational things, in, you know, social things. You know, monitor their work, okay? Um, let them know when they're doing good. Let them know when they need to, you know, pick it up a little bit, um, <laughs> you know, and, and you'd be surprised, okay? Initially, you know, I've had some of my older daughters, they, 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 call, they call me up and it's like, you remember that time you said this and that and the other, now they're in their 30s. Oh. And they're telling me something that happened years ago and I really sometimes might not remember <laughs> it, but they do. And so now you know what you're saying and doing is having an impact. OK, you may not get the report back right away, but, you know, it's there. So those are the things I would suggest for parents to do. Ever since um, the what really kind of brought this to, to light initially years ago were chat rooms. OK, uh, people would pretend to be somebody else, you know, and they would lure these girls or male victims, whichever into these chat rooms or meet them in chat rooms, begin to talk to them, pass themselves off as uh, a person who might be interested in them on their level, okay? But it would really be like a 55-year-old man talking to a 14-year-old girl. Um, and the next thing you know, hey, let's meet, let's do this. And then the pedophile or the, uh, the predator gets to meet them and do the things that they practice in their mind to do to to get this person to uh, to allow them to have sex with them or not or just do you know other criminal things to them so you you have to be weary that uh, there are people who are using the internet and social media pages just specifically for this purpose okay um, law enforcement <clears throat> uh, usually is on top of a lot of it I mean you read about things the state police do uh, you read about things that prosecutors offices are doing where they are, you know, getting multiple uh, officers from different departments, sometimes uh, specifically trained in um, how to uh, mine these areas for, you know, cyber criminals. And they they employ some of the same tactics that the cyber criminals use Which is great. on their victim to to catch them. I think that's and fantastic. You absolutely, know, it, it, it uses their own methods against them. Absolutely, okay. And when you see these, I mean, you'll see them on the news periodically. Uh, there'll be a roundup of however many people that were caught up in this particular ring, and um, you know, it's it's one of those things that has proven to be very successful because just the same way that predator can go out there and you know in that target rich environment and look for a victim, we can also do the same thing to find several of these predators at one time. Well, my answer to that is thank God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank yeah, God that exactly. uh, we have law enforcement smart and using mm -hmm. these tactics and a lot of research to, you know, to round up these individuals. And what do you think uh, is the likelihood of this happening? I mean, people always say what they hear on the news, what they hear on TV, we're here on TV now. Mm -hmm. What is the likelihood of that really happening in the case of an average teenager? Well, the, the likelihood, I would say, um, I would say the likelihood is at a higher level than most people would be comfortable with. I couldn't give you an exact percentage or figure, but just from what I see in the news and what I see occurring in, in my own job, the types of uh, calls that I uh, experience going on and answering with this and that I have experienced, I would say that more people than we would like to realize are out there doing this uh, because one thing that is true, whether it's a cyber criminal or and in your person in in your face in person criminal, is that that person may get caught that one time, but how many times did it happen that they didn't get caught? Right, right. So for them to get to the level where they're already comfortable doing this, they had to already experience uh, either a certain degree a a, a degree of, of success right. at doing it. So. Um, now, there's no way to measure, okay, um, what happened years before a person was caught and nothing never came of it. There's no way we can know, but there is a way that, you know, we can determine what happens beyond that point, you know. So, th I mean, and that's where, that's where the punishment comes in. That's where, you know, uh, people have to serve sentences and get help or whatever this case may be that's going to help try to get them to, uh, become a more productive member of society. Your tactics that you're employing 
are what people should remember. And I know money's tough uh, yeah. and, and for everybody mm -hmm. who reaches most everyone. Sure. Uh, but you'd rather have a temporary little strap additional than have to call the police that your child's missing mm -hmm. because you didn't stay close enough involved. Mm -hmm. The internet almost provides a whole new set of challenges than people who were parents 20 years ago. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to change that. Right. So yeah, we really. just have to <coughs> just be extra vigilant. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is, it's really important that people remember to stress their kids to only interact with people they've met in real life yeah. and not meet them in the, and, uh, after just meeting on, in the cyber world. Right. I, I mean, you have to understand there are people in your life and you get to know them. There are people you may know on the computer and the only thing you really know about them is <laughs> what you've discussed. And as much computer. as, how do you trust somebody you've never met in real life? Right. So, well, Fred, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate this You're because very every mm -hmm. single Thanks. parent needs to know every single word that just came out of your mouth. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And please remember the little extra time that you spend with your child, reinforcing the trust. And just like the sergeant said today, take the time with your children to remind them that it's about the crisis that they might be in right that moment and that they should worry about any kind of punishment later.